CHI St. Elizabeth uh, program trauma program coordinator Jody DeWitt. Jody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So we're talking do's and don'ts of winter weather here. So with snow and ice we've been seeing, what, what are some good reminders for people here? Well, we've seen snow, we've seen ice, we've seen warmth, and then it goes away and it comes back. So with us, we talk a lot about falls. We talk a lot about the cold. If you have to go out with icy and cold weather, then protect yourself. Right. Tries to stay inside, it's better inside. But if you have to go out, protect yourself. Stack your car with blankets, food, water, just in case you're going long distance, in case you go into the ditch and can't get out or there's not help coming right away. Um, motor vehicle crashes happen with ice, obviously. So we want to go slow. Don't use your brakes all the time. If you hit a patch of ice, just yeah. let off and kind of go over it. Do not use cruise control on those long trips because that will make you hydroplane and skid on the ice as well. And we just ran a story last week, I think, about walking like a penguin. See what walking you like a penguin, using your body and yeah. flat-footed, yep. slow, no heels. I see people in heels walking on the ice. I'm like, oh, cough, you're Katrina, gonna, cough. you're <laughs> gonna get, you're gonna get hurt. Um, but good grips on the shoes. Um, that is very important. We see a lot of falls, of course. And if you're gonna fall, try to control your falls. Kind of hard to do, but some of us have meat, some of us don't. Try to land on those places, maybe that give you a little bit more padding if you can. I know sometimes you just like wail, flail your arms around. You don't want to do that. Yeah, right? you don't want to do that. Although if you land on your bottom, that's sometimes a better protection. Yeah, exactly. There you go. All right. So people that like to do those recreational activities out on, on the ice, fishing, you know, skating, stuff like that. What's some advice there? It's a hard one this uh, this year. Um, I was just up north. They have ten foot of snow up here. Right. We have none here. Um, it's hard because you can't see what, how thick the ice is, and really it has to be minimally four inches thick, mm -hmm. and you can't tell that. So the popular places usually will have signs posted don't come on ice is thin but really if you don't know don't go on the ice just don't especially in lakes you can fall through you should be wearing a life jacket when you're out there because if you do fall through that will keep you afloat until help can come if you're seeing somebody fall through the ice you really shouldn't try to save them um, call 911 do what you can um, you should if you're falling through the ice you should try to float up um, sometimes that's hard to do because you're panicking and it's cold Right, very, very yeah, cold, yeah, very in some cases. Uh, what about sledding safety? I know because kids, I got two toddlers, they're running around out there. And, you know, we want and to the know reason I brought this up um, when we were talking about what we were gonna do is I had several sledding accidents right. as a child. I don't like my kids sledding, but I know it's lovely to do. <laughs> Stay away from other people when you're mm -hmm. on a hill. Um, we haven't had much snow, so sledding is really neat right now for the kids. Stay away, go feet first. Don't lay on the sled and go head first because facial injuries, head injuries, I've seen a lot of that happen, crashing into each other. Don't go near buildings. Um, you really should have a place that's established yeah. sledding area. Absolutely. And then carbon monoxide, that's something we, we get reports on all the time. Just how do you mm -hmm. keep those the people safe there? The best thing to do is have a carbon monoxide right. uh, detector. It's a battery powered. You should check those batteries just like you would do your fire protectors and your smoke alarms. And because it, it's odorless, tasteless, and people don't know what's happening. And you should have your any gas appliances mm -hmm. maintenanced every year to make sure there's no leaks happening. All right, Jody DeWitt here with St. Elizabeth's here in Lincoln. Thank you so much, Jody, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right.